What does it truly mean to live a bold life? You see, you can read your Bible and you can pray and you can do all these different things, but that still doesn't equal up to a bold life. A bold life must be lived in love. Let me tell you a story. I recently heard a story told by a young man named Brad. Brad tells the story how he first met his best friend, Kyle. He said there was a Friday afternoon and he was leaving school and he seen this kid, sort of a nerdy kid, leaving school and he had all of his books in his hands. And as he walked by, he thought, man, that kid must be kind of nerdy. It's Friday and he has all of his books. It's at this point that he sees a group of guys run past him and run into this nerdy kid with all the books. They knock it out of his hands and he falls down in the dirt and they just continue to run off. And Brad, you know, having some sympathy, he turned around and he went and helped him pick up his books. He learned that the kid's name is Kyle and they actually had a lot in common. They live pretty close to each other. So Brad walked Kyle on home carrying half of his books. Brad that goes on to say that over that weekend, they spent pretty much every second together. Uh, Kyle actually came down and played football with his friends and Brad's friends all liked him. Brad liked him, he became best friends. That was just their freshman year, so they had four more years to get even closer and closer and closer. And Brad says that actually Kyle over the years, he filled out and he actually became more popular with the girls than the captain of the football team. So Kyle had a pretty good four years. And it's on his fourth year, his senior year, that Kyle is the valedictorian and he has to go up and give a speech. And during the speech, Kyle says that graduation is a time to thank those who helped us the most. He says, teachers, family, coaches, and most of all, friends. Kyle goes on to say that that Friday afternoon, he'd gathered up all of his books out of his locker so that his mom didn't have to come back and get them because Kyle was planning that evening to go home and to kill himself. You see, but Brad's chance encounter, Brad turned around, Brad seen someone in need, and he stepped up, and when he did, he saved a life. What are your actions doing? What are your actions capable of? What kind of difference can you make in someone's life? Because that nerdy kid, or that weird kid, or that guy that sits alone at lunch, or that guy that never talks at work, you don't know their story. You don't know what they're going through, what they're facing, what their home life looks like, what their work life. You don't know that when they go into that next class, if they're gonna be bullied by every single person in that class. You don't know what they're going through. What is your encounter leaving on someone else's life? Whenever you encounter someone, are they feeling built up? Are they feeling better about themselves? Are you leading with love? Or are you waiting for someone else to do it? Because too often in our culture today, that when we see someone in need, we don't even stop because we immediately think someone else will do it. Well, as a Christian, if you want to truly live a bold life, you are that someone else that you should not wait for someone else to rush in, that instead you rush in, that you step up, you move in. When you see someone in need and when you see someone hurting, when you see someone depressed, alone, you step up and you step in because you don't know what your actions can do to someone's life. You could be the one who turns around, helps some kid pick up his books and you could save his life. We don't know what our actions are capable of. But I do know that God calls us and God calls us to love. In fact, one of the most revealing stories in the Gospels is Jesus' encounter with the young man we know as the rich young ruler. You see, the rich young ruler comes up to Jesus and he says, Teacher, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus looks at him and he says, You know what you have to do. Keep the Ten Commandments. The rich young ruler says, Well, of course. I'm a Jewish boy. I grew up Jewish. I've kept all the laws all the way up to now. Basically, I'm perfect. And Jesus says, Okay, but do you love? Because then he tells the rich young ruler, then go sell all your possessions and give to the poor. You see, we often overlook what happened in this passage. We often overlook what was said, what Jesus meant. You see, because the Hebrew word for love, as Jesus would have knew it, was ahava, ahava. And that meant love, but actually the, the three consonant that can be broken down to actually is ahav, and it means to give. And that's the root word. Basically, the meaning of the word is to give. So to love is to give. So we know that giving is greater than receiving. When we love, we give. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. 
what are you giving? You see, we have the rich young ruler who has everything. By Jewish standards, this man is perfect. He has it all, but he doesn't have love. And in fact, in 1 Corinthians 13, right before the famous love verses you hear at every single wedding, it says this. If I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains, Paul says if I have enough faith to remap geography, if I have that kind of faith, but I do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, And if I give over my body in order to boast, notice why, if I give up my body, if I give over my possessions, if I do these things so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. I think now we can see why Jesus asked the rich young ruler to give because he was testing his love. What he was telling this rich young ruler is, no, no, you you have everything, you've done everything right, but do you have love? Do you love others? Do you love your neighbor? So much that Jesus actually says when asked what are the most important commandments, he says, love God and love your neighbors as yourself. Jesus says that love is important, that love can change lives, love can save lives, love can change the world. Are you going out and loving others? Your actions, your words, you may not have the possessions of the rich young ruler that you could give to the masses, but you have love, you have actions, and you have words that can make a difference in someone's life. What can you do today? Maybe you going and sitting with that person sitting alone. Maybe you going up and being nice, being the hand on someone's shoulder, being someone's friend, just speaking up, saying, hey, you're not alone, I'm here with you. Maybe you can stop someone from going home and becoming a statistic. What are your actions doing? Because Jesus has not called us to a life of passivity. Jesus is calling us to a bold life, a life of action. You see, too often in our culture, in our context, when we say we love something, we're simply talking about a feeling that I feel love. However, in Hebrew, ahava is not a feeling, it is an action. Love is something you do, not something you feel. Love is not something that you fall into. Love is something that you give. Are you giving your love today? I pray that if you take nothing else out of this video, if you take nothing else out of any of my videos, you simply get this, that you should go out and love others that you should go out and show the love of Jesus, show the love of the gospel, show the grace and mercy of God to everyone that you encounter. So when people encounter you, they are built up, that they are encouraged, that they know the character of God because the way you treated them. That is my absolute prayer for this channel, is that you would go out and you would show Jesus to everyone you encounter. Think about how you can do that this week, and then pray about it. Ask God to give you the courage and the strength to live boldly in his name. All right, guys, question of the day. What is the greatest act of kindness you've ever seen with your own eyes? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, go ahead and slap that subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know that you enjoyed this message. I pray that you go out and you live boldly. All right, guys, love you. Keep living that bold life.